Well, hello there, humans, hippies, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and whoever you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. On Bushcon Blitz, today we're going to be looking at the Lorraine 40T. Now, I've done a live stream on this tank already, and I really, really like it. I enjoy it tremendously. But it is fair to say that if you are looking for a tank that is super OP, then this isn't really it. It's not super OP at all. I find it to be an incredibly fun tank to drive because it's got two things going for it that I really enjoy. Now, one is obviously mobility. I'm a big mobility fan, and the Lorraine 40T has mobility in spades. The other thing it's got going for it is it's an autoloader, and it's got four shells in the clip. Now, that in and of itself is pretty cool. The uh, other French Tier 8 that used to have four shells in the clip was the Amex 5100, but it was pretty broken with four shells in the clip. It was able to uh, clip out certain tanks, like, say, a T28 Proto, uh, if you got a hold of it at the right time. That has three shells in the clip now and a three-second delay between the shells. The Lorraine has four and a two-and-a-half-second delay between the shells. Now that, for an autoloader, is not a... It's not a quick-firing autoloader. So you have a decent amount of time between the shells, which means if you want to sit there and fire off all the shells, it's going to take seven and a half seconds. And that gives other teams the opportunity, other tanks the opportunity to return fire quite handily. But as you can see in this video, if you're clever with the way you work the Lorraine, uh, and you can draw shots out of the enemy, you're able to dump that clip off and do an awful lot of good. It is a, a fantastic thing to have an autoloader when driven well, and it's a horrible thing to be in an autoloader when you drive it poorly, because an autoloader is very much a, a super high ceiling, super low floor situation. When you have shots in the clip, you're a monster. When you have nothing in the clip, you are quite literally just a big barrel of hit points waiting to be collected. And if you are up against an opponent who actually watches and knows how many shots you can fire in a clip, then yeah, you're going to be in huge strife. That's a 5100 down there. You can see the similarities. The oscillating turret, the very square, weak, thin sides of French armor, the, uh, the lovely, lovely speed once it gets up. Uh, it's all there in terms of heavy, but this thing takes it to the next step, the next level. Takes it to the next level with another step. Oh, let's get our metaphors mixed, Bushka. Four shells in the clip is a massive thing. It gives you the ability to pump out 900 damage. Now, that might not sound like a hell of a lot compared to, say, a Boar Sig or an SU-152 or an ISU-152 and that, that can dump 640R for in a single shot. But it's the same kind of concept. You're looking for opportunities to dump all your shells off at once uh, without getting hit in return. And you want to do it very, very quickly. And the, the reason that's a cool thing is, well, you can find tanks that you can clip out and you can clear those tanks very, very handily. If you can find anything at 900 hit points or lower, average rolls will clear them. Unfortunately for us uh, in this situation, we just didn't have time to clear this IS-6. And I was a Muppet and didn't go to base. So, you know, not everyone's perfect. But me and the AMX 1375 are working clips together there beautifully up until uh, the end of the game. And we did actually do a fair chunk of damage. So I, I feel I feel like I'm vindicated in saying that that one was actually a solid game for the AMX, for the Lorraine 40T. What an autoloader doesn't have is massively high DPM. Generally, anyway. Uh, the DPM on this tank is very poor, and even that's even against other tier 8 mediums. Tier 8 mediums are not renowned for their monster DPM. Uh, you get more DPM on average in a tier 7 medium than you do in a tier 8 medium, and then it jumps again at tier 9. And it's a weird thing. Tier 8's this, this kind of weird place for mediums. You generally get a lot of gun depression mediums with between 8 and 10 degrees of gun depression with around about... 190 to 225 alpha with around about oh, 2300 2200 to 2400 dpm not a whole lot out of that range the lorraine only has has under 1900 damage per minute but as a stat dpm is it's it's a real mixed bag DPM is great. It's damage per minute, by the way, if you're wondering what that thing is. We're just so used to that in the lexicon that we don't really explain it sometimes. And by we, I mean me. Uh, DPM is great 
when you have time on target. What the Lorraine specializes in is peekaboo. You want to be waiting for your time on target so that you can get a couple of shots in like this very, very quickly. And that's where the DPM of the tank right there is outstanding because you got like 450 damage in really, really quickly as a medium tank. And then you're not doing anything. So this is where you've got to decide whether you go for a full reload, you double tap that AP shell again, and you go for another four in the clip, or you push it and try and get some more damage out. That's exactly what we do here. We get a nice max roll and looking for another shot in that blaze. He's determined that I'm not going to get it. There's the RU. I think maybe I'll give him a chance not to look at me anymore. And when I go back out, he won't be looking at me. Even though he was looking at me. We get another shot in or on a full reload. So in those two instances, we pretty much maximized our DPM. That was fine. What you want to be doing is clipping targets out, right? So I've done the art of auto loading and all this kind of stuff before, but you really need to understand that the best thing that an auto loader is at is is good for on a battlefield is to get rid of targets, like to get rid of tanks on low hit point pools. Like you can see here that that RU251 and the Panther. I can clear those guys inside the same seven and a half second window, which is a thing that not a lot of tanks can do. Yet an auto loader can do that and do it very, very handily. The 40T is exceptionally quick. It is very, very quick. Uh, I was really surprised when I jumped in it the first time. You will get up to 60 kilometers now. Now that is lights out fast for a medium tank. It doesn't have the most amazing uh, horsepower to weight ratio compared to say crazy tanks like a Drac uh, or maybe an LTTB, but it's very, very good in terms of its peers, like a Type 59 or an Indian Panzer or something like that. You're at 23.75 horsepower per ton, as opposed to say the 16.03 or the 17.7 of the Indian um, and the Type 59 respectively, the Type 59, the former, not the latter. And with your terrain resistance numbers, which aren't spectacular, factored in, you end up with an effective horsepower per ton that's 26.4, which is really, really good. Really, really good. I'm not kidding. That is that is a really good horsepower to, to weight ratio for a medium tank at tier eight. And you can feel that. It's not like it's just the paper stats of the tank and you, you don't really get a feel for it when you're driving it. When you're pushing the hill on mines or, or when you're trying to outrun a heavy tank or when you're trying to COD a tank, you really feel that extra oomph, that little bit of grunt you've got under the bonnet that you wouldn't otherwise have in a tier 8 medium. You also really feel the complete lack of armor. It's it's horrible armor-wise. Like, you don't want to be relying upon your armor for anything uh, apart from getting penned. And that's fair enough, because if it was really, really quick, and it had a really, really good gun, and it had armor, then I'd be really, really peed off, because <laughs> it would be unfair. And that, that to me, is... Uh, you know, it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, there's been an awful lot of these tier 8 premiums come out over the years. And this is pretty unique. There's, It's an auto-loading tier 8 premium that's really quick. Like that, That's that's cool. And I've seen some people say it's just an AMX 5100 that's better. And it is literally that. But that's still pretty cool. Like, I mean, a T32 is, you know, a... T-34 with a little bit of a different gun and you know like it's it's the nuance in a tank that makes it interesting they're all boxes that have X value attributed to their their different specifications but it's the way those X values get attributed around that make them a little bit different and a little bit nuanced and a, a little bit interesting for me so I'm I'm happy enough with that as as a, you know, a, a realistic way of looking at the tank. Um, if you want to call it an AMX 5100 with, you know, plus, that's cool. I'm, I'm down with that. I love the AMX 5100 personally, so for me, that's a winner. You have to watch out for Borsigs and ISU-152s. And if you get up tiered into tier 9 games, you really need to focus on the mobility of the tank because the mobility of the tank is where that is, it's going to shine. Um, that mobility is something that you have over all the heavies. So you can get around and outflank people and then clip targets out like this AMX 1375. You can see our Amigo here out clipping that 1375. 
This is Soviet Pro, by the way, doing very, very good business in the uh, Lorraine 40T. Look at it go. Like, it's it's not a drac, but not many things are a drac, because, like, a drac is a freak. But if, if you want to know how to drive an autoloader and how to take advantage, you've got to be a bit of a shark. You've got to hunt for those targets that don't have a lot of hit points in the pool. And when you get the shot on them, then it's happy days because, you know, 563 hit points, you can clear that out. And you can clear it out really easy. It's, it's just three hits. And that's that's something that an autoloader does better than anything. So he's cleared the Amex 1375, and now he's cleared the Drac, and he's looking for love with that T44, which coincidentally is 892 hit points. And again, that is a sub-average alpha roll if he hits with all four shots. And this is the art of the autoloader. Now, 0.31 is your dispersion on your gun, which is, is really good, really good. Uh, and you get eight degrees of gun depression, which also is just grand. It means that you're gonna be able to effectively get a lot of more a lot more shots off and clear a lot more targets because you hit them. Your penetration numbers are reasonable for a medium. They're not super high, but for a medium tank, they're pretty good. You're under a... Um, under a a couple of really high pen kind of heavy tanks, but for a medium tank, they're good. They're not they're not just average, they're good for a medium tank. You've got 212 millimeters of pen on your AP, uh, and you've got 259 millimeters of pen on your APCR, which again, is good for a medium tank. It's not amazing for a heavy tank, but it's good, it's good. So that balances out your low DPM, and it balances out your lack of armor. Play it intelligently, Use camouflage, use uh, use hit point trading to take one shot when you can uh, deal four back and, and win the trade, and you'll enjoy the tank immensely. Uh, I'm not here to pass judgment on the value of the tank. Um, a lot of people will note that the prices seem to have gone up for some of the, the premium tanks of late. You know, I, I agree, they're, they're getting quite expensive. So if you're looking for something different though, um, the Lorraine 40T, is hard to go wrong with. On Bush Gone Blitz, look forward to seeing you all out and about soon. Uh, be nice to each other. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay safe on the battlefield. Oh, and if you want to send replays in, uh, bushgagaming at gmail.com. Thanks very much. Bye for now.